Hey guys, welcome back to a new week of what I cooked for dinner this first night. I totally forgot to film our plated plates, but we had family and in-laws over for Labor Day. We had baby back ribs and country spare ribs and a bunch of potatoes. We had some of the cowboy caviar. We also had a couple other salads, but I didn't film them. And then the next night I made a big batch of chili. I do a five ingredient chili. It's really easy. I'll leave the recipe link down below. It's very simple. And this is my plate and Matt's plate. Matt has the cheese on top and I opted for no cheese. We also had side salads, but I forgot to film that as well. And we will see you guys tomorrow. So this night we were having breakfast for dinner. I have some pancake mix to use up, so I'm just gonna mix up the pancake batter and get these Vermont maple breakfast sausages in the oven. I find just baking them makes it just easier. They're out of the stovetop way and they bake up perfectly fine. I just turn them halfway and I really like the maple flavored. They're really, really good. So after I had the sausage into the oven, I mixed up the pancake batter and I also decided to make some scrambled eggs on the side as well. So I went ahead and scrambled up the eggs and then I just took a preheated pan, threw those eggs in, got them nice and fluffy and soft and brought it all together. It was a really good dinner. You guys know if you've been watching my channel for a while that we love breakfast for dinner. We actually have it pretty often, maybe once a week, and usually on the weekends we'll have it for actual breakfast. So pancakes, pretty easy, really delicious. They just never get old. So our final plates were just some fluffy eggs with a little ketchup, some pancakes, and some of the maple sausage. It was really good. The next night was BLT, so I had my mom's garden tomatoes sliced up with salt and pepper. I actually used some rolls because we needed to use them up, and I've been doing my BLTs with butter instead of mayo. I know that might sound weird, but give it a try. It's really good. As long as your bread or roll is nice and toasty, the butter melts really good. And then I just pile on the bacon, the lettuce, and the tomato, usually in that order, oddly enough. And it's just so good with the butter. Give it a try for sure, guys. Especially, too, if you're not somebody that is a fan of mayo, because I'm personally not. I just don't like it on my sandwiches. And then I always cut them in half because it's just easier to eat. And I had some Alexia black pepper tots in the oven. So when they came out, I drizzled mats with some of the Terrapin Ridge Farms Buffalo Ranch. And we each had a BLT. It was so delicious with those fresh garden tomatoes. It makes all the difference. But this was our dinner tonight and the night before. And we will see you guys tomorrow. So tonight for dinner, we had leftover Olive Garden. Matt actually got a $200 Olive Garden gift card from a client. It's pretty common he gets gift cards, so obviously we go ahead and use them. We did have Olive Garden takeout for lunch, and we had leftovers, so we decided the next night just to finish them. So we've got the Olive Garden salad. I'm having leftover pasta with short ribs, and Matt's having my leftover chicken scampi, although I had a couple bites. So we just kind of finished up leftovers. It was really tasty and definitely appreciated and we will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, home from work, getting ready to start dinner. I'm doing like a creamy rice and chicken. So I just cut up this, it was like one huge chicken breast. There was a lot of fat on it, so I cut off as much as I could. So I've got three pieces. I tried to get them sort of equal size so they cook evenly, but I just did the best I could. So I've got three pieces of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I've got my white rice, I've got some cream of chicken with herbs, soup, and then some mixed veggies. So first I'm gonna cook the rice. Once that's cooked, I'm gonna mix it up with this creamy chicken soup, probably a little bit of milk or half and half to make it a little bit creamy and moist. I'm gonna add in the veggies and then these I decided I'm gonna do like chicken cutlet style. Um, so I'm gonna bread them and par and partially fry them so just get them crispy on the outside and then i'm going to put them right on top of the creamy rice and bake them and finish them in the oven so a little bit of a process we're going to be eating dinner a little late tonight but that's okay so i'm going to go ahead and get started so the first step was to get the chicken breaded so i always use flour egg and a seasoned italian breadcrumb and i always just kind of do it like assembly line style 
It just really makes life easier to line everything up in the correct order and have your hot pan with a little oil waiting for you because you definitely want that pan to be hot when the meat hits that. It just won't soak up as much of the oil and obviously it'll cook a lot quicker and get a lot more crispy and brown on top. So I had my pan waiting on me with a little bit of oil in it and I go ahead and bread all these up throw them in the hot pan and let them just cook for a couple minutes on each side until they're nice and golden brown. I've got my rice steaming away. I'm going to flip these, get the other side nice and brown and crispy and just keep moving along with the process. All right, so step one is done. I got the chicken nice and golden. If you can see, it's not cooked all the way through. Um, obviously, if I was making chicken cutlets alone, I would cook them all the way through, but you just want a nice crispy crust. This is the oil I like to use when I'm frying meat. It's the Smart Balance Cholesterol Free with Omega 3s. Uh, it's just a really good oil. It doesn't ha it doesn't leave like an oil taste on your meat. So again, they're not cooked all the way. I'm just going to rest these. I've got my rice simmering away. When that's done, we're going to make it into creamy rice, and then we're going to top. The chicken on top and put it in the oven it's going to be really good so i'll show you what it looks like when the rice is done so the rice is done and i went ahead and mixed up the soup and the veggies i also added a little bit of whole milk and i mixed the rice in with the mixture and then i'm going to pour it into a 9 by 13 baking dish that I sprayed with cooking spray just so everything doesn't stick. So I tried to get as much of the rice mixture as I could out of the bowl and then I'm going to go ahead and flatten it out and even everything nicely. All right, so I spread out the creamy rice. I put a little bit of black pepper. I did not add salt because cream of chicken and cream of whatever soups have sodium in them. Plenty of it. So I did put a little sharp cheddar cheese. I used this Sargento Extra Sharp Cheddar. That is optional as well. I just figured, why not? So now, I'm going to go ahead and put the partially cooked chicken right on top. Like that. And I'm going to cover this because we don't want the chicken or the rice to dry out. I'm going to cover this. I have my oven already preheated to 375 and I'm going to let this bake for about 20 minutes. And of course, I will show you what it looks like when it gets out, but I have a feeling it's going to be really yummy. All right, so here is how the chicken came out. Nice and crispy on the outside. And then the rice here with the veggies looks really yummy. Here is Matt's plate. We are going to dig in and we will see you tomorrow. Home from work and about to start dinner, I have these green tomatoes here that I'm going to do some fried green tomatoes with. I have not made these in years, but I thought it would be a perfect opportunity. So I've got my flour, my seasoned Italian breadcrumbs. I also have some rolls because we're going to do pulled pork that I have warming in the crock pot. So I've got my assembly line, flour, egg, and Italian breadcrumbs. So I'm just dipping the tomato slices, just like I did with the chicken in each. And I like to do it assembly line style, just makes it easier, like I mentioned with the chicken. I've got my pan already preheated with some of that Smart Balance oil, and it came out pretty good. I will say that... The tomatoes that have a little bit of the reddish orange tint tasted better because they were like just starting to ripen. So if you're going to try and make fried green tomatoes, I would recommend trying to do it with the ones that have a little bit of the orange in it, like the one here. Uh, they just taste a little bit less bitter. But otherwise, they came out really good. I love that oil because it doesn't leave like a greasy, oily taste in your food and they fried up perfectly really quick. I just did a couple minutes on each side and hit them with a little bit of salt and pepper. And our final plates were just the pulled pork that I had made previously frozen and reheated with the fried green tomatoes. Thank you guys for watching my dinners for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.